egg and sausage mornings. Drink your water and a tub full of bourbon. And why, for the matter of scotch, I mean, ladies crotch to movies always act like mermaids breathe water. Obviously, mermaids are mammals because they look part human, for goodness gracious, righteous books and boots of my ancestors' sake. Do they not? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very exciting episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. It's that episode you've been waiting for. That episode you never thought would come. But, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to present to you one of the least requested movies that anyone has ever given someone to watch or do a review on. Today's episode is on Mermaid Down. And I'm joined today, as always, with my buddy Curtis. Curtis, how you doing, man? I'm doing very good. Thank you for asking, sir. Curtis, so uh, Mermaid Down. Well, I think I can give you my quick uh, review here. I thought it was a good story about a mermaid who's captured by a psycho, but then yeah. treated as a mental patient. It's definitely not the worst horror-related mermaid film out there, but it's not anywhere near good. So, yeah, so would, that's my I quick summary. <laughs> I would agree. I would kind of, I would kind of agree with that. This is like this movie didn't know what it wanted to be this whole time. Yeah, I didn't know if it was like a, a heartwarming get together, girls knock down, drag out girls who just you know str struggled through life and they're in a psych ward. If they were trying to be a hoarder, ser a horror serial killer slasher film, um, <clears throat> it was just really weird. Like there were several scenes where they tastefully cover up her nipples, uh, and then there are scenes where there's like, nope, just tits everywhere, and then there's like a semi rape scene near the end. So this movie's weird. Like it, it has no no genre. Yeah, it tries to be too many things in the wrong ways and they could have made this movie sal salvageable with a very specific specific uh, audience which is you know teenage girls uh, they just got to cut out the boobs and some of the weird rapey stuff and this could have been great like a good family oriented movie i think that's the big problem though and like you described it weird that is probably the best descriptive word we could come up with because there's no other descriptive word that would make sense. Weird is yeah. accurate. As for trying to make it like a family friendly teenager kind of feel like this guy, Jeffrey Grumman has no idea what he's doing here. Like, I don't no. even know if he knew what he wanted to do here. Do you know what I mean? No, nah. I feel, I feel this could have gone to an editing room and have he could have had someone read it and be like this is weird this is weird this is we just like have the plot points cohesively drawn out like on a storyboard and have certain things tossed away i yeah well what it's I mean, not good he he's he's half of the writing process right so we can't give him yeah. full credit or shit for the poor writing kelly baker is just as much at fault uh when it comes sure. to this movie but i have to tell you like on the scale of bad, this is a lot closer to Infinite Santa 8000 than a lot of the other films we've seen. Like, don't get me wrong, there are our love classics that we have, like Troll 2, that are bad, but we still love them because there's just something fun about it. Uh, this is the direct opposite of that. This is not a good movie, but yeah. it's it's not. there's nothing redeeming really about it. There's, you could see there's like flashes and moments uh, where it could have been a lot of fun. Um, but honestly, like, sure. I don't know. I try to even write notes and break stuff down. And I just, I gave up. I, I gave up. Don't blame you. I, 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 I wrote a couple of notes now. This, I've seen this movie twice now. And I watched it earlier today, so it's fresh in my memory. And I think I need to start doing that whenever we record, like watch it the day <laughs> of. Because I forget things after two days and I'm like, I don't remember that. Listen, um, fans, uh, though, we're not going to miss out on Clark Gaff's 2020, okay? Like, we're still going to get them, I promise. I know oh, they're there. Worry, they're, they're always there. Hey, I can joke about that. You can't. Slow your roll. Uh, Keep <laughs> anyhow, the hashtag going. I, I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm looking at Kelly Lauren Baker, and she's the creator. So she's probably the person who had the most creative control over this. And I'm, I don't know Jeffy Garland's situation if you just like, yeah, whatever. I'm getting money for this. Forget it. 
Yeah, or, I mean, or what? Remember, we but, talked about it in like the show notes. This was an Indiegogo funded project. So this they raised, guy, you know, whatever amount of money for him to go make this film, and I just don't know what happened. I don't know if he just phoned it in and said screw it or what. He's been in a lot of stuff. Like, well, not a lot. He's well, he has uncredited acting work. He's mm-hmm. got some acting experience. He's produced three things: X Factor, Whiskey Blue, Mermaid Down. But whoever it is, whoever he paired with Baker, she does not have the same amount of experience as him. And even his is just kind of like run of the mill. Like you, why? Well, it's a lot of acting, isn't it? Like if I remember right, yeah. I looked at his IMDb. It was it was primarily acting. Well, wasn't uncredited he in, like, acting. Twisted metal where black. He doesn't even say anything. Like he's a st- he's like a wedding guest, uncredited. Yeah. And then he's a voice actor for Twisted Metal, the PlayStation One game, That's, which okay. is also uncredited. So no, I wouldn't call him an actor. No. From that, I'd call him, you know, kind of. He's dipped into acting here and there. He. He's been around the business. I, yeah, he's been around the business. I I don't know. I don't want to say anything judgy about his career because I don't know him. Exactly. I no. I mean, we're roles. not. I don't we're know judging this. Skills, we're but... judging this movie purely, and we're not yeah, really it, even it, judging. We're this is one of those discussing. films that that feels like a bunch of guys got in a boardroom with a lot of cocaine. And I've said this before about several films, but I really mean it this time. And they just went to town on that cocaine, and they came out like just. Oh, what do you think about this idea? Oh, yeah, cool, man. Add a ghost in. Ooh, yeah, a ghost. Only mermaids can see the ghost. And then just weird stuff. Okay, she's going to get murdered by these guys on a boat. But no, watch out. There's a hero to save her. But wait, watch out. The hero, he's an evil, demented, weird, mad scientist. Oh, mad scientists don't exist anymore. Psychiatrist. Better. Make it a psychiatry ward where it's all about women. And friendship. Friendship's the real reward we got from this. Listen, okay, I said it before, I'll say it again. There were moments where I thought, okay, this is going to get better, and it doesn't. Like, Dude, I have I have <laughs> questions about so many things in this movie, too. Like, there's a scene where this lady dies, the mermaid snaps her neck, and I'm just like, and she's like, let me look at the mermaid while I die. No, I weird. got nothing, man. I got nothing. Like, uh, like I think the most fun I had in this movie was the first, like, what is it, 15, 20 minutes, the boat scene? Mm-hmm. I, I think that was the most fun I had. It was fast-paced. There was a lot of talking. And those two sailors, they weren't great actors, but I thought they did a good job for how low budget think, of a movie this was. I don't think anybody was a bad actor. To, to credit every single person who was in this film... I think they all did a good job with what they have. Yeah, exactly. I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. There's totally nothing wrong with the acting at all. I'll say this is completely on par for what I would expect for like a, a teenage girls go on an adventure free willy esque type movie. So <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Dude, when they broke out of that bedroom and ran off like chasing uh the, the mermaid <laughs> girl, I was like, Holy crap, man, like you're first of all, you're in a mental facility. Okay, yeah. there should be there should be round the clock guards, mm-hmm. uh, and it looks like someone's house. Like no joke, it looks like they filmed just at someone's house. Um, so, and for our audience, the context here, like there is a scene where they're at. They're okay. So right after the, the mermaid gets captured, she gets taken to a psych ward, and all the girls just kind of fuck with her. But here in the psych ward, you're saying like there, there's no bars on the windows. They nope. just they just break out. It's like, oh, you you could leave it any time you want. Even the cameras, the way that the cameras are kind of staged or what they're filming, it's not really – like there's no perimeter cameras based on what we see from yeah. the security room. So if someone got outside and they never saw them leave the room to go outside, that person is now missing and gone and no one knows where they went. I just – I mean like some of that stuff, it's, oh, it's just so like – And they put a paper bag over a guy's head because reasons. Because boobs. And and the giant, I mean, she's straight up butt naked when she falls out of that chair to finally use her legs. And they're is that trying why to... they're hiding? Her yeah. With... Is yeah. that why they're hiding the camera? Because they don't want people to see her naked? It's like, dude. Yeah, no, I mean, that's it. They're, you know, what? they're trying to give her some, some Cause, decency. Because this is, this, this guy must be Christian. One of the people, one of the creators of this movie must be like super Christian. Or they're, they're just the trying same... to make a point about, I mean, 
it's first of all we know way he... to do it especially <laughs> when you show like the tits so many times and then yes. you, you cover them up for t- as tastefully as possible and it's just like i'm confused yeah why they, remember we don't understand what what he was trying to achieve here whatever uh, it was it feels very sexually restrained it was very weird yeah there's i mean that's the only that's word the we can use for this that. movie <laughs> I feel like I feel like I have a good understanding of the kind of per- people that produced and directed this film are, and it's a very conflicted message. So let's talk it's more okay. about the ghost. Let's let's talk about the ghost in general because this one character, when we're introduced to the the Babysitters Club, um, which I do want to double back and talk about those two guys because I fucking love that that scene too. Perfect. Uh, she, <clears throat> this one of the characters ha- is talking to her friend who's, she's telling her to check on things and everybody else is like ripping on her, calling her imaginary. And this girl kind of like vanishes with some semi basic, you know, effects. And we don't, we don't really know anything about her aside from, okay, is she a ghost or is she like an imaginary friend? Exactly. Well, the well, crappy effects later. tell me it's a ghost. <laughs> Yeah, 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 agreed. And she's moving things, too. And, like, because right after she leaves, she just walks by the security guards and shit moves, and they're like, oh, what was that? Okay. No one can explain it. Yeah, no. (laughs) There's a ghost for for reasons. It's never explained. It's just... No, it's totally explained by the end. Yeah, at the end, it's not explained. The ghost is explained at the end? Not really. Yeah, Yeah, she's the girl who was that that skeleton that's trapped in the wall. She was murdered by the psychiatrist before. That's why she's trapped there. I'm not. uh, I'm I'm not. I'm just explaining why ghosts are in the film. Oh. Didn't make any sense. No, it's clearly just a plot moving forward. That's all it's for. It's for the plot. It shouldn't even be a part of the plot, though. Yeah, but how are the girls going to get out of the sinking ship? Uh. They could have done it some other way. They didn't have to write a ghost. They could have done film. every. They could have done every single thing about this film. There's so way. many things in this film that are just no. You're you're grabbing too many things from too many different areas, and you're just squishing them together as much as you can, and none of it's cohesive. I don't remember her being the the skeleton on the wall. All I know is that the psychiatrist is evil because he's just evil to be evil. So wait, you. You genuinely don't remember that part, or you don't remember the connection? I genuinely didn't remember that discussion where they talked about her being a skeleton in the wall. I must have missed that. So there's like a piece, like her necklace or something like that, and she uh-huh. tells uh, the the girl who we later find out why she can see the ghost. She tells hmm. her, I mean, I don't even care if we spoil things. She's a mermaid too. So yeah. <laughs> she tells the that girl who's in the psych ward, um you know, break through that wall because I've been here before. And she's basically trying to tell the girls like, that was me. I died right there. Like he killed me here. Um, uh. Sort of a thing. But, but to your point, like the go, <laughs> that's just a crappy use of a plot point. Uh, and, and not to bag on it too much, but like even the effects on the ghosts on, yeah. were pretty bad. They, they were okay. She was just kind of semi-transparent, which isn't hard to do. With crappy, um, like, stitch-look scars on her face. It looks like something oh, you'd yeah. buy at, like, a Spirit Halloween store, dude. Very, like, very uh, low. Well, it's a low-budget indie film. $85,000 for, for what we get, though, which it's very professionally done. So The can boat probably there. was, like, fifty grand alone, I would bet. Oh, man, that too, that too. Uh, everything. For, for the price he got to make this film... Good use of money, good use of lighting, good use of acting, like your actors. Comprehensively terrible, but, you know. Yeah, it's sad that it missed the mark, um, in my opinion. I think there was, you know, there was a lot of stuff that I like about the movie if it wasn't all one movie. I have so much fun watching this film. I hate this movie because it's not good. But I also love this movie because I just I just start laughing because I'm just like this makes absolutely no sense. Why? You, but why? Do you have a favorite? Like quote? The, the very beginning, the very beginning, we're on the boat with two old men, and he gets, he's like, I got a gift for my niece, and he pulls out like a teacup set, and, and then they drink whiskey out of it, right? They're drinking whiskey out of glasses, yeah. and then they pour whiskey in the little cups, and then they tink them and drink them, and it's like. 
All right, this guy knows he's making a shitty film at this point. This, to me, that felt like self-awareness. But later on, I'm like, no, he's just doing weird stuff to do weird stuff. Because these two guys, like, they're the evil guys who are like, we want money for this mermaid's body. So they catch her, and he's like, well, we should cut off her tail um, because she'll probably be able to break out of a net. Well, and they can fetch more money for the tail than they could for the whole body of the mermaid. Like, if you have the other half of the mermaid, it's useless. You don't need that. She's just going to complain, right? So you might as well just chop it off. That's his, well, that's a, that's his like, mental capacity about it, which is None so of weird. that makes any sense no. at all. I don't understand his reasoning. It's, it's bad. It's bad. Anyhow, they... <laughs> During this time, when they're when they catch the mermaid and they're cutting her up, the evil psychiatrist, who at this point when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this is the romantic uh, hero. He's coming in because like I'm thinking through, I'm trying to think of like if I were gonna make a movie about a mermaid, and there's there's a semi not bad looking guy coming on the ship, and it looks like he's coming in to save the day. Um, I would just I was like, that's probably the romantic hero. Turns out no, it's a psychopath killer. Completely wrong there. But when he gets on the ship. Like, he murders these two guys who you thought were, like, originally going to be the villains. And then it just zooms us into, uh, like, a, his pictures of the mermaid, of her, like, growing a cocoon around her, her where her fin used to be, because they yeah. cut her in half. Basically how her legs grow back. Yeah, and she just doesn't use them, because... She's trying not to turn into a mermaid, so she swims in a pool, and chlorine prevents her fins from growing back, because chlorine. Yep. And that's just a hypothesis. <laughs> well, no, the ghost said it, so it has to be true. I think it's because of the chlorine. <laughs> By the because way, you, of chlorine. If you had the subtitles on, it says chloride, I think, instead of chlorine, even though she clearly says chlorine. I think it's because of the chloride. <laughs> like i don't know it just this this movie just screams um you know low budget you know what it really feels like it almost feels like a college project or a high school film project like you took a film class yeah. you wrote this script for this film class and you just you had to you know you had to do it it was for school it was kind of a cool idea you know let's yeah. do a mermaid thing and then we chopped this mermaid in half let's throw in a you know the, the coke fiend meeting room happened but it was in oh, a college okay. setting <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I think you're right. I think so, you're right. It's so like, let's make a movie. I I, I kind of like, like I said, there's bits and pieces of this movie that I really like. I really like the end scene, uh, the fight, per se, down in the bottom of the boat. Um, like, that's where you really get to see where I think we could have had a little bit more fun with this movie, a little bit mm -hmm. more horror-like which is the psychotic Dr. Bayer, right? Like that yeah. character needed more depth. I don't think he was very deep. Yep. You just No, he was evil to be evil. Yeah, but, and even then it was like he switched from this dude who runs a mental ward to this crazy massacring killer. Like there well, was this movie no was transition. very It was very men bad. Like all the men in this movie were bad except for the nerd in glasses. What about the security guards? They were bad too. They just oh. didn't know what they were doing. They were ignorant. Fair enough. I didn't have any positive thoughts about them aside from them having like attempted humor lines. I humor mean, I like that lines. they didn't help him take her down in the basement, I guess, in a way. Oh, I didn't but, even remember. But even yeah. then, that was out of fear. That wasn't really out of like being a hero. So I agree with you. Yeah. Like, they, there's really no positive there for them. Um, the mean, nurse was the most positive character in the whole movie, Nurse Sandra. She was the only adult that wasn't a bad guy. Yep. Other than glasses. Um, and we're not counting the, girls, the women in the mental ward. Like they, they the have their own. The girls don't yeah. count. The girls have their own issues. All, <laughs> I think they're all supposed to be teenagers, and one of them is just like super mean, like the super bitch character. You have the girl who believes her mom's protecting her because she's dead, and then you have the the girl who likes to light shit on fire. You, you have always have to have a pyro. Yeah, you always have to have the pyro. Uh, you have the girl with the imaginary friend. Like, we have an assortment of characters here, with each with a special ability that most of them you forget about. <clears throat> Nightmare on Elm Street. One of them, like, puts makeup on the catatonic mermaid. And she's like, don't tell anyone I do this. 
And then the mermaid put the lipstick back on her at the end. Like, what What a way to bring it back, man. What a way to bring it back. There, There's too much. There's, There are too many bonding moments with the mermaid, period. Like, every single character has to get a moment bonding with her. Why? I I, yeah, I don't know. Mermaids are magical creatures, dude. Like, you just got to... You got to give it to him. Yeah, dude. It's it, it, it. Well, I should stop saying, dude. Yes, my friend. <laughs> it is very. Uh, it's very ambiguous of knowing what where the film's direction's even really going, because she like she gives her a mermaid statue. She's like this or basket of things to kind of play with, and the the mermaid, which she's she's quoted as the mermaid. She's never named in the film, never given a name. She's just the mermaid. Uh, she grabs a mermaid statue and just crumples it with one hand and then she points at it and then she points at herself and then uh me tarzan you, yeah, yeah yeah like Jane. me mermaid <laughs> and then the lady at the nurse looking at it is like oh my god you know sign language which yeah, yeah. i i was just like she just pointed at that thing well, she and does some pointed... sign language right after the pointing. She does like yeah. two hands together, and then another movement, and then that's yeah. But I when... wouldn't. Have, I would not have caught that. No, I like... don't. I don't think we can really justify anything that they do in this movie. I think because to... as soon as she said that, I was like, "No, she's saying I'm a mermaid." Like, <laughs> if I were to see that, I'd be like, "Do you, you think this?" And they would nod or shake their head to try and dig any deeper. <laughs> And figure out what they were actually trying to do or why they did things is just it's beyond what I'm willing to do for this movie. Like <laughs> I'm I'm glad to. you put me through this. This is good payback. Dude, um, I I, I didn't I didn't gonna... hate it though. I didn't hate it. This is I, I thought it was terrible. I guess I'm I, more I... just disappointed in it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just more disappointed. I, I really think it could have been good. It could have been fun. I I really enjoyed seeing where the director went with what he what they what he had, and I watching it the second time was even better. I'm not gonna lie, because like my questions of why I started looking in the movie a bit deeper, and I was like, yeah, I don't think he knows why either. Nope, guy has no clue. I mean, it literally <laughs> was an original story. They didn't want to base it off of anything based on what the Indiegogo page said. They just wanted to do something new and unique and fresh. And this is what they came up with. Oh my god. You know what they call a good woman up here? A catch. Keck. A catch. Jesus Christ. I got you. The, no, the lines. The, like, that's, that's what I we get know, from A lot this of doctor. the lines were bad. The, like, because they try to make the big, buff looking, bald guy security guard, they try to make him, like, fruity and yeah. tootie. Yeah. Because they, they gave him, like, lines like, I need a fruity margarita. And it's just like, Okay, why is that funny? Because you could tell that the whoever wrote this script is like, yeah, this is meant to be funny. We're keeping that in. Why? Yeah, it would have been better if he said, "Give me a beer and I'll go down there." You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't yeah. fit the character. Even when he's explaining everything about the, because all of our exposition is through a character telling a story, like yep. the very no, beginning. There are a lot of two, stories. Yeah, the two sailors talking, the the two security guards talking. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I can't remember all the things that we got exposition well, for. Well, the mermaid, but... the, the guy who knows sign language, what's his face? Dr. Miller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, his character didn't make sense to me either. No, they only brought him in because of the whole sign language thing. And even then he doesn't talk a lot. And when he does But there talk... was a girl who already knew sign language in the club and they just hit it for a while. And then she started signing. I, I mean, like... honestly, do you think... Do you, would you trust a mental patient? But we don't need that guy. I we know. already have her. But I'm not. It's a waste. <laughs> I'm not trusting. I don't understand it. We could have saved get rid of that character. <laughs> we could have saved ten grand on the budget. Damn it. <laughs> you could have. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> like, there's too much complex shit in here that you explain, we, and most yes, of the explanations yes, yeah. don't make any fucking sense. You're pulling them out of your ass. Yeah. <laughs> You could easily just make this about a mermaid in a psych ward and all the shit she goes through. All right, here, here's all I got a... left. I, I Here's all I got left for this movie, okay? Yeah. The mermaid design was pretty neat. 
especially for the budget and you think about it being an indie uh-huh. film i thought the mermaid design looked really nice the scales looked awesome oh dude the tail looked awesome she she did a great job by the way mm-hmm. hats off to the mermaid alexandra bokova she was phenomenal i think she did a great job especially for not having any speaking parts um i also liked the idea of a women's psych ward being the place where the mermaid gets held hostage like that's pretty clever i don't know if i've ever seen that done before or um even thought about that before i think that's really cool i think that's an idea that could be adapted and turned into something even better than what we got obviously with this film now things i definitely didn't like i only have like two things that i really didn't like the ghost itself like i liked her story but that's a standalone thing like that that story itself could have been cool this could have been different episodes of a tv show about dr bear you know what i mean like that maybe this didn't have to be like yeah, it didn't have to be like a fantasy team novel team novel series right. where like all these things are real and they're all around us. Which leads me to my second con. I really didn't like the love story all of a sudden in the middle of the lake when she gets her tail back. The randomness that that had where she hugged the girl and then the girl now is like, I think it's Raina is her name, the redhead, the, the bitchy one. Now all of a sudden mm-hmm. she's like this. Oh, oh I yeah, love you I was so going to talk much. about that. This embrace or whatever. Well, let's talk about. Well, it she cause... slips and then <laughs> they they accidentally embrace and all of her feelings just go loose and she realizes that she loves the mermaid and cares and isn't a terrible person after all. He had to have had some kind of symbolism here. You know what I mean? Like he was. He had to have been doing something. Friendship is magic. That's the symbolism. Dude, right now with the way COVID's going, I saw a video of two kids hug, like two cousins who haven't seen each other in months or whatever, and when they hug, they just melt into each other's arms and start bawling. Like, a hug is a powerful thing. They say, I think it was, uh, you and I worked with a a lady named Jenny um, at at the company we worked together at. And, I mean, any time I saw that lady, she was always bubbly, smiley, and if I was in a bad Mm -hmm. mood, I could give her a hug and I would feel ten times better. You know what I mean? Like, the power of a hug She lets you hug her? Oh yeah, all the time. You're um, lucky. Jenny, Andrew, like any of the front desk workers, even even um Jeremy? Jeremy, yeah. I could give Jeremy a Jeremy. hug if he wanted. And and we need to get Jeremy on here. We do. Jeremy's uh, contamination. Oh, we need great. to get him on here for contamination. I think he'd really want to do that one. Let's but anyways, please. you gotta we'll we'll contact this guy. Anyhow, audience. Yeah, audience. Hugs, I guess that's what that scene was trying to tell. I didn't like it just because it felt very just thrown together, but Maybe yeah. that's what they were trying to do. You're right. Maybe it was. Just friendship. It's a Hugs hug. Hugs are nice. Hugs are nice. Give me a hug, brother. Um, yeah, no. I don't know. But that's really all I got to say about this movie. So I'm going to let you, if you have any other notes or anything else you want to talk Dude, about, I'm going to be here with you. I can talk about this movie for hours and hours and hours. This is one of those films that just energizes the crap out of me. Like, <laughs> I... Like watching, if we had to watch like Infinite Santa 9000 again, I'd be dead right now. Like I couldn't talk for like five minutes, but this film is just, there's so much shit. Like when the the psychiatrist goes on his killing spree near the end yeah, and he, he, he gets like the gun, he's like, oh, there's only one shot of this one. And then he picks up like a Tommy gun. Where did those weapons come from, Curtis? I So <laughs> I think so they're I just thought... movie props laying around. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking that like this guy had a collection of like old war stuff or something. Maybe they explain it somewhere, but this guy has an assortment of like old World War One slash World War Two weapons. This like, movie doesn't weapons. explain shit. Don't don't no. even try. And then he like starts murdering the girls. Okay, so like the cat they, they try to rescue the mermaid, but they bring the mermaid back and he, he crashes into it with his car. Yeah, so they're driving Instead together. Instead of just putting it back in his car. And, and he just runs her ass over in a wheelchair. Dude, and then the mermaid, like, snaps the nurse's neck and was like, w- why? The mermaid's a killer. She's not good. No good person. No. Just because she didn't want to get sedated? Well, maybe you shouldn't have put that scene in the movie because now I don't feel really, really uncomfortable about the mermaid. I So and then, that's interesting because I, I don't remember her killing the nurse because the nurse wakes up i just remember her oh, really? hitting the nurse i thought she snapped her neck no because she said, she's like i because the nurse tries the mermaid to, yeah the nurse tries to tell like i'm fine i'm fine let me see like let me get up i want to see the mermaid so she's not dead i thought she died dude i thought she snapped her neck i don't know yeah we'll have to go back and look and figure that out i don't remember 
I think you might be right. Let me see the mermaid. I, I just she snaps well, anyhow. the other doctor's neck. Yet he still survives. That's that's also just ridiculous, man. She's like vomiting out like ink at some point. Yeah. And then as soon out. as she does it, he just like cleans up the window with his arm and then just starts driving again as if it doesn't affect him. I'm like, I like that scene. That was great. Was, just like was, that was a good well, made bit of him, humor. Yeah. It made him look like a badass. Like it made it made him even though he's like pathetic. And, but be, between this, like he just starts killing everyone. Yeah, he so... just starts killing them, and, it, and his motivation is just so weak. He sh- he headshots the younger nurse. Tommy guns the the shower stall where I think two girls are hiding, two or three yeah. girls are hiding, and then the <laughs> when they're all okay, so all the girls are running away, and and uh, the ballerina girl who thinks her mom's looking over her is like, I gotta pee. It'll be real quick. I'll be right back, and she runs back in the house past him after he just killed the girls in the shower to sit down in front of him and pee like what part of that is believable i don't know but she gets back up and does some magical ballet moves to not die and she's like my mom's protecting me and then he shoots her and she misses she's like you missed from like two inches my mom's protecting me from you oh bitch and then it's a taser. He just like electrocutes her because there's water coming from that wall. No, the blood. Where did the blood come from? That's right. There, that's right. There's blood. Somehow from blood the wall. runs down the wall. Yeah, it's. Yeah, that's good. I think I don't she know. did a good job. Maybe acting. he shot through the. You know. Well, they all did a great job acting. Yeah. It was just bad. Just the reasoning behind it, the shit they're doing, the whole killing spray, killing thing, and then them getting on a boat, being stuck in the boat. When she's, I thought when she's like about to smash his head, and you know you're expecting his head to explode. Instead, she breaks the bottom of the boat and like makes a massive hole. Like if she's that strong, that would have just blown his head up. Yeah, she she smashes two parts of the boat. She smashes the bottom of the boat to drown him, and then she yeah. smashes that wall where the ghost tells her to because that's their way out. Yeah. He should have his head should just have have kind of gotten crushed and splattered at that point. Cause... Yeah, because he comes back way too many times, man. Even for a horror yeah. movie, that should have been the ending right there. There shouldn't have been the whole on the beach saying goodbye to each girl individually, and then them going, "Which of us is really the mermaid?" And then her pointing at the imaginary friend girl, not the imaginary friend itself, but the girl who had seen the ghost. Yeah, that's something they set up from the beginning that just didn't make a lot of sense to us as viewers because the only person yeah. who can see her is the mental girl. And then all of a sudden, the only person who can see her besides the mental girl is the mermaid. And then yeah. you kind of think about it. You're like, oh, so... Is they're the... all looking at the ghost near right. the end, too. <laughs> yes. There's a scene where they're all looking at her. Yeah, I don't... And that's the other thing is the ghost doesn't get closure, which feels weird. Normally with something yeah. like that, you'd want to see the ghost get closure. So they pass on to the other side. But this is not a movie that makes sense. So that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Spoiler for you. Oh, and then Dr. Bayer swimming away. He comes up again for the last scene out of the water. Yeah. Just yeah. just fine. Nothing wrong with him. He's, he's had his neck snapped. He's been drowned and thrown underwater, deep down underwater, under the boat. Yet he still somehow gets to come up and be, you know, okay for the moment. Because reasons. Yeah, well, something pulls him back down into the ocean. We're not sure what. We assume it's it's chlorine. chlorine. (laughs) It's chlorine. It's the chloride. It's the chlorine. The chlorine saves the day. Yeah. Well, Uh, uh, congratulations. Congratulations, Jeffrey Grellman. You made a movie. Uh, it you cost, made a movie. It cost you eighty-five grand. You raised a hundred thousand. Professional grade movie. And it is very much so. I mean, it. That's the other thing is it's crisp. You know what I mean? Like it's a crisp shot. It's not bad. Um, I, it, it's just not a good movie. This movie makes me want to start drinking. It's just not a good. Here <laughs> we go, uh, drinking right now. Bye. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I give this movie a solid four out of ten. Everything's that's pretty great. generous. <laughs> Everything's great except for the movie parts. <laughs> um, Everything is awesome about this movie except for the movie. 
I thought it was, you know, I really enjoyed watching it. I just, I hate it, but I really enjoyed watching it. Like, there, there's something beautiful to to be said about watching a disaster like this. Because I could just yell out, why? But why? why? Nobody in the room will get mad at me because it's so, doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. I, I mean, I mean it, this movie's from 2019. Girls will not watch movies with me. <laughs> by, by girls, I mean my ex-girlfriends will not watch movies with me. Well, your current your current best buddy will, so that's yeah. that's good. <laughs> Bit too loud. No, 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 because one of them made me watch. Uh, there's a romantic movie with Amanda Seyfried, and she like falls in love with some guy, and she's like, "What about the girl?" And the the very last scene where they're going to get together because it's a chick flick, a romantic like movie, and she's like, "What about the other girl you're with?" He's like, "I forgot she was even here." And then they like elope. This is like things you'd never hear. They just jam them into movies. And this is this movie is full of that. That's all this movie is. Yeah. I, I the only fun fact I have for you is that the script, right, was an award winning script. Okay? That's it. That's Dude, I, I believe that. Yeah, that's all I got. And I think that, that that's how we should think about this this film. Just think about it's, the award-winning script that was made. What is the script based off of? Nothing. It's an original award-winning script. Just because it's different from other things. Yeah. I got I got nothing else for the movie. Dude, I love the concept of something supernatural getting stuck in a psych ward in a human's body. Like, they could have done so much with this. So, anyone who makes movies, make it. Yeah, very quickly. Let's... I was trying to go through my mind to see if there's anything out there like that. And I don't, I don't know of anything like that. I think that would be cool. Chilling, gripping, uh, a lot of fun to watch. You can make it a oh, really man. good horror movie. Now I want to watch like, The Shining. I don't know why, but now I want to watch The Shining. Uh, so if you've heard of The Stranger, like very similar in that vein, something that could shapeshift after killing and be in like an institution that's locked down like a prison or something, I think would make for a gripping story or movie. So. All right. Yeah. But I'm really glad that you picked this, Clark. I really am. I, I think it was different. Um, it was an indie film, which isn't something that we necessarily go out of our way to go find. So that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Um, and I mean, like I said, I didn't hate it, but it's definitely not a good movie. And I, I probably wouldn't watch it again unless if someone asked me, hey, what's that? And then maybe <laughs> I'd, I'd put him through it for fun. I mean, watching it the second time was probably the best view. I don't think I have it in me to watch it again either. You watched it with page. a friend the first time, right? Oh, man. Yeah, and I was yelling at the TV the whole time. It was great. <laughs> yeah. See, I watched it alone while trying to put my two-month-old to bed. So, like, that was rough. That that was rough. I thought. I think I told you, I thought I missed something. Like, maybe I changed a diaper or made a bottle or something, and I thought I had missed something important. So I rewound it. Yeah. And no, I didn't miss anything. It just never is explained. So, like, it's just not a great... Yeah, it just wasn't a great, great feeling. So... I wouldn't give it a uh, four out of ten. I'd give it probably like a three, three and a half at best out of oh ten. Oh man, you're 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 cutting on the production value though. There, I, I'm just giving it a regular <laughs> score here, like we would it's a regular for a normal, old score for a normal movie. <laughs> for a normal movie, gotcha. Um, I give this a paper bag on my head because of boobs out of ten. <laughs> that's that's swell, pal. I like that. <laughs> that's gee golly gosh. Gee golly so, Curtis, gosh. Um, let's talk about what we have going on. Cool. In our lives. What's uh, good with you, my friend? Well, it's July when we're recording this, and this entire month yeah. of July, the Mutant Fam is watching uh, different Joe Bob Briggs episodes from the past two seasons. Um, I've seen a lot of movies that I haven't actually seen so far in the past seven days of this being started. Um, the one I'd like to talk about probably most is <laughs> Q, the what is it, the Winged Beast, um, with Daniel Carradine or Carradine, or Carradine, whatever his, his name is. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun to watch. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely on our list now of things that we're going to watch to do for the show. So you guys can look forward to that episode sometime in the next year, probably. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to, my friend? Well, as you know, it was uh, 4th of July weekend, dating ourselves. I went to see my brother in uh, southern Arizona, where we enjoyed some fun times of watching fireworks in the Target parking lot. Um, 
we couldn't buy any because of the uh, the COVID nineteen shutdown. But uh, when I gotta say goodbye, you know, my nephew he loves me a lot, Curtis. Like he he loves me a ton, and he when I left, he just decided to show that to me and as passionately as he could through a punch in my groin, um, which surprised me. You know, I didn't expect him to love me enough to do that out of anger <laughs> of me leaving. I'm but he so did, sorry. and it, it made me feel, you know, it's one of those bittersweet things. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, he really loves me. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> yep. Three years I, old. Three I know years what, old. I know what that feels like. Yeah. Yikes, think, my dude. Yikes. I think anybody who's had kids or has nieces and nephews would understand yes. that sometimes they'll the younger ones will attack you. It's almost worse because they don't really, like, especially when they're younger and they don't know like if it's yeah. a girl and they don't even know what that pain could feel like, right? I'm not trying to, to say guys versus girls, whatever. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying like my daughter, when she was younger, she, you know, she grew up pretty fast, tall wise. And she's mm. always, she was always head level with me. And sometimes she'd catch me coming around the corner in the hallway and I, I wouldn't know she was there or whatever. And just headbutt me right in the groin. And I'd be like, what the hell is going on in my house right now? What just happened? It's not her fault. She has no idea what she's doing. She didn't even know that that would cause pain. She doesn't understand that. But uh, for you, it's a little different. It sounds like he knew what he was doing, and he just wanted to show you that kind of love and let you know that he was going to miss you, Uncle Clark. He was going to miss you. Uh, he, yeah, uh, I think he, he knows better, but he's still like articulating that in his head. I don't think he fully understands things beyond his passion, passionate responses. So he'll learn, grow, he'll learn as he grows. Uh, I think it is the same thing. I think he just doesn't realize that other people are real too yet. That's hard. Some people That's never funny. learn that. Yeah, some people don't. But on that note, is it time to plug our social media? I think it is. Let's I'm just sipping some it. water. <laughs> that is the number two guys horror pod. Two guys horror pod on both Instagram and Twitter, where Curtis loves to talk all the time on Twitter, hang out with everyone in the Mutant Fam, as well as you if you message him. Very active. Sometimes he'll watch movies live and he'll live tweet. Uh, I handle our Instagram, which is a little a little bit less active there. We, uh, once covid nineteen's done, however, there will be a lot more fun mutant monstery pictures as we explore the United States of horror. Uh, vacation ideas, Curtis. Um, also, make sure to send us an email at our email address, which is the the word to T W I or T W O <laughs> guys and some horror at gmail.com. That is two guys and some horror at gmail.com. Feel free to give it, leave any suggestions, or maybe if you'd like to be on an episode, feel free to ask that as well. Maybe we'll have you on. Who knows? Anyhow, I think that is good for our plug. Curtis, do you have anything else to say before we leave these lovelies behind? Nope. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate every single one of you. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>